Hi guys, welcome back to Quran Logics, where I take a very quick look at the logics used and applied in the Islamic Quran. Now in this book, there are hundreds of sentences where the alleged author, a god, a highly narcissistic creator slash god, threatens followers and non-followers alike with horrendous punishment if they don't believe what it says in the Quran, a book claimed to be written by that very creator slash god slash author. But can you honestly believe what it says in the Quran? Because in several sentences, we read that something is created, but we're not really told what and how. Now, according to the Quran, this creator slash God can prove things out of nothing, but then need six days for our tiny galaxy, or is it just the planet Earth? We don't know. So let's take a look at what this creator says in the Quran about this, this creation. So indeed your Lord is Allah. Okay, so this is the God who created the heavens and the earth in six days and then, okay. And it says, do you verily believe in him who created the earth in two days and measure and so we created the heavens and, earth and, and so on. So let's take a look at all these claims. Now in the first sentence, in the first example, this brilliant and best of all creators took six days by itself without any help. Well done. And he creates something that is called the heavens, which is... Uh, I have no clue what the heavens is or are. But then neither do Muslims, who claim this book and thereby this statement represents guidance, clear and easily understood guidance from this book, where their eternal afterlife is at stake if they get it wrong. But this creator created these things called heavens in six days, together with earth. Now, could this be talking about earth and the surrounding atmosphere? Now, I could go with that, no problem. I'm, you know, I'm tolerant and easygoing. But why six days? If there was no earth yet, there was no daytime either. So how the hell can you get days? Six of them. How? And why six? How does that make any sense? Now, when this was done, this proud creator went home. And instead of sitting down in front of the telly, it was time to do yoga or something and hover above a big chair somewhere above something where you need to rise there. We're not told anything about the location. And then from that high up position, where, wherever that is, it says that night was invented to cover the day on Earth. When I thought if you remove the light of a star, you have darkness, you know, the absence of light. So, come on, you can't bring about night. Not in the real world, you can't. And why didn't this creator finish the job instead of first going home and only then in stalling night, you know, remotely? In all, we're not told anything about how Earth was created and from what. So actually, this statement is utterly useless. And why would an all-knowing and all-powerful creator slash God require six days? Nothing here makes sense at all. But now ah, we, we get a different story, a set of sentences in the Quran in chapter, four, well, it's in chapter 41, where now, this time around in a different account, earth is created in two days. And then mountains on top of the surface instead of from out of the crust and some nonsensical stuff called sustenance. And this takes four days. And then another two days to create these funny things called heavens again. You know, this time around, seven of them. There's no details given here. Does this make sense? Any sense at all, please? I mean, you get a planet created in two days. What exactly is created from what to what and to what level in those four days? And what is the sustenance thingy that is still missing? The word sustenance is used to indicate what we animals need to maintain our bodies. So it's food, drink, air, you know, things like that, basic stuff. But what exactly is Earth, the planet, without drink, i.e. without water? Is Earth without water an Earth? No, of course not. 
is Earth, the planet, without mountains, air, without an atmosphere, any equal to Earth? No, of course not. <laughs> Get out of here. So what did this creator slash God do for two full days when there was no day yet? And then it takes this best of all the creators four full days to install mountains, water, plants, soil, bushes, trees, all life forms and this thin, fragile atmosphere all around the planet where mountains are A, not on top of the surface and B, not at all firm. And then after the planet is complete, after six of these days, it takes just two days, whatever a day may mean, to create not only the star of the system and the other planets, but trillions of moons, planets, stars, nebulae, and all matter we have in the universe, including a cloud made from alcohol. Really? And all this is logical to a believing Muslim? Really? What makes matters worse, in my eyes at least, is that in chapter 50, our creator God now changes its mind again, saying, well, no, actually, I was just kidding. It took me six days. Now, the sentence also claims there is the, the heavens, then the earth, and then something in between them. Now, if the heavens is supposed to be the atmosphere, the in between them is a serious mistake. And if not, it is useless. So it's not good so far. So again, all we get is some, you know, these, these nebulous claims using vague and ambiguous language. We get contradictions requiring human beings and their feeble excuses to try and fix things. These people can't actually explain anything and can only try and deceive others by claiming that the two days for the planet are included in the four days used for the mountains and this thing called sustenance. So that the 4 plus 2 equals the number 6, which is what the other two sentences say. But this does not in any way make it any better. It makes it worse, since now you need to explain why the story mentions the mountains and sustenance as separate items. It is simply not true that the Quran in any way says we created something and included in this was something else. We don't get the real information. We get bragging and claims, but no useful information. What is one heaven? What are seven heavens? What is in between them? And what is this sustenance? I mean, we know that we need to plant things, we need to harvest things, we need to grind things, we need to process things, and then we get food. There is very little that 7 billion people on this planet can simply, you know, just take and eat. And then this, you know, take this as sustenance. It's impossible. So we get some abracadabra mumblings, which maybe impress desert nomads in the 7th century. But it's not fit to bring anything useful to a person living today. Now, what is quite telling here is that the sentence in the middle, this in the, in the chapter 41, we find hard errors, things that are factually wrong. There are mistakes in the Quran. Because he said, turned he to the heaven when it was smoke and said unto it and unto the earth, come both of you willingly or not. They said, we come obedient. Now this is wrong, okay, since at no time can heaven, no matter what it is, be composed of smoke. Smoke is very clearly defined. It's the result of a chemical process, combustion. And the dishonest tactic of equating it with gas doesn't work either in the 21st century. Nor can the claim that the planet can make noises through wind or other movement. It says that the planet speaks, forming coherent, distinguishable words, as does this thing called heaven. And that is nonsense, of course, a factual mistake. Neither can respond intelligently to a question. Come on, guys, these are fairy tales, nothing more. So is any of this logical and befitting an all-knowing, perfect creator God? Why would anyone trust this God? Accept the facts, not the fakes.